Welcome! In this video, we are going to start learning about props. Props are super important in React because they are the fundamental way in which information gets passed from one component down into another. Remember, we have a one-way data flow in React, so components get data and then they pass it down. They don't pass it up. Okay. All that will begin to make sense as we dig into this. We're inside of our props folder inside of starter and I'll just CD down into there. So get into my props, get into my starter. And then you may have already run this um, command if you were watching one of the previous videos, but basically this is a create react app package. So we've learned about create react app. So we know the first thing we need to do when we get a create react app package is run npm install. So I've got to come into the starter and I've got to kick off npm or yarn install. So I'll run npm install. And this is going to take a little bit to run. This is stuff that we've already looked at and are comfy with. So while that's happening, I want to talk a little bit about the folder structure here. What we'll see when we come into the index.js file here is that it imports a bunch of other components. So what we've got here, I'm just going to give ourselves some more room while that's still downloading. We could import practice one, practice two, practice three, etc. So these are other components that I have already set up for you. So if we come down into practice one, for instance, we'll see that here's this functional component set up. And at the very bottom, we export it out. There's more going on and we'll dig into that in a moment. Um, but practice two, you could see this is also a component and it gets exported down at the bottom. And what we will do to work with these is we will just uncomment one of them and then copy and paste that right here as a component call. All right, so now we're beginning to see how we could get different components broken up into different files into here. So we're in practice one. Let's go ahead and check to make sure we've got that. Now we could run npm start. And that will, of course, go ahead and open up our server for us. Let's give ourselves some more room to look at all of this. And you might see some warnings here that certain things aren't being assigned and used. React is very specific about enforcing that if you're not going to use something, then don't import it, which is why we have these other practice exercises commented out. So let's come into practice exercise one and look at what it is we actually have to do here. Okay, so we have two components on the page. This isn't common, and later on I will talk about breaking components up into other pages, which makes a lot more sense. However, for now, learning purposes, this is gonna be okay. So we've got one component here that has some information. Like, let's imagine it does an API call or gets that data passed into it somehow, and it gets a username and an ID. However, our user component that actually has the styling for everything and how a user should appear is going to be a separate function. So how do we get data from this into this? Now remember, components that we have looked at so far are all functions. So we could potentially do something like this with JavaScript. Now remember, we're in JSX, so to execute JavaScript, we have to do this. We could take ID and username, pass it in as parameters, right? That should not look crazy. That is just normal vanilla JavaScript right there. However, in the JSX, X syntax, the way we're going to do that is we're going to pass it like this. Okay, so what we have here is we're telling username, hey, you're about to get a property or a parameter of ID, and it's going to have the value of this. Now we can hard code one in, but remember, if we want to use JavaScript in JSX, we have to use the curly braces. So that's why I have ID there. Okay. Same thing for username. Hey, we're going to give you something called username, and then we're going to give you a value. Again, this could just be something we hard code here, but uh, we're going to set it up with variables. All right, so what happens now is normally we would, inside of here, get access to ID and username, All right? That's how a normal function would work. React doesn't work that way. React will take everything that you pass here as a normal parameter, we are thinking of it like a parameter, and it will attach it to props. So inside of here, notice that I already have this set up. We have props username and props ID. This is props in React. This could have been anything. So we could have called this some random storage value. Notice that our code still works. I've never tried this in production. I don't think you should change the names of props. Uh, this is how all the React uh, refers to it and how it is standard. But basically what's happening is they're just taking parameters, values that you pass into a function, and attaching all of them onto props. 
The other nice thing is that if we console log out props, I don't know if it will be in this case. Yeah, right now we're only getting a few things, but later on and in other applications, you may be getting a ton of different stuff in props that you might not even um, know is there because it might not be referenced. Um, in here, it might just have extra data being passed in. Okay, but that is props, and notice that it goes one way. We have practice one, and it gets passed into user. Now, we could in this example, this user just could have been right here, and it wouldn't have needed to have been a whole other component, but this also points out something, which is in React and in component architecture, you want to break your apps up into really small little niche pieces of functionality, literally just functions, that return a small part of this. So imagine a user would normally have an avatar and a bunch of other things, but that code, and we'll look at later, can be stored in another file and kept off so that it could just be kind of agnostic on its own. That's component architecture. And this is how we pass IDs around. Now you might ask, how do we pass practice up into something higher? Or I'm sorry, how do we, how do we pass ID or username into something higher? And the short answer is, as we're learning the basic flow of data in React, we don't. Okay, there are conventions to get around that, but in general, we set data at one level and pass it down. So if practice one needs to get data, it would have needed to be called at a higher level component. Now, this is the highest one we have, so it's being called here and passed down this way. All this will continue to make sense as we go along. Let's keep playing with some different exercises to get more comfortable with props and how they work.